Praise the Lord, precious saints, and welcome to another daily prophetic utterance to start your day. And those that have come in and completed the four-day fasting, congratulations to each and every one of you. Now, to those that have just come across this post or you're still doing the fasting, may the Lord bless you. I really encourage people to partake of this particular fast so that you can grow in the understanding of intercession, that it goes beyond a five-minute prayer, that it goes beyond just speaking in tongues, but rather it is entering into the Spirit and allowing the Spirit of God to help us into our intercession. So I just want to read from the Scripture. It's according to 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 to 6. Therefore, I exhort first, of all that supplications, prayers, intercessions be given of thanks, be made to all men for kings and all who are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceful life in all godliness and reverence. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Saviour, who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be uh, testified in due time. Somebody say hallelujah. So here Paul is encouraging that we should pray for not only ourselves, not only our families, not only for one another, but also for the authorities in our countries, also for kings, also for anybody in any type of position, because Jesus who is the person that is the mediator. He stands in the gap praying on our behalf, praying for our souls, praying on behalf of the church of Jesus Christ. Precious saints, we are living in the end times and we need to understand how to pray to be able to push in, to go further, to go deeper into the things of God in this hour. If you believe in the end time revival, if it is something that it's new to you, you're going to have to press in. You're going to have to understand previous revivals. We're going to have to dig the wells of revival to understand how revival came because this revival that's coming, it's not going to be for the faint-hearted because the, the religious people will be the greatest persecutors of this end-time move of God. A religious person is someone that loves their religion more than they do a personal relationship with God. Let me tell you, they love their religion. They love their processes. They love their uh, doctrines of demons because they, the traditions of men are the doctrines of demons more than they do the presence of God, more than they do coming back to God. But I believe that this revival that's coming is not just coming for one denomination. It's coming for all denominations, but it's going to pluck people out of those denominations, out of religion, out of those things and get them ready for the soon coming and snatching away of the bride of Christ, somebody say hallelujah. So we need not only prophets in this hour, not only preachers of fire in this hour, but we also need end time intercessors, end time eagles that will be able to rise up and look at things from a perspective above the enemy, wherever the storm is, they can rise above and see where the strategy is, where there will be intercessors that will also be seers, intercessors that will also be hearers of God, be prophet. The, so the prophetic will operate with the intercession. There'll be prophetic intercession. We know specifically what to pray, where God, you will hear what God is saying. You will see what God is saying, and then you'll come back and pray accordingly. And so it is in this hour. We need to pray accordingly through the help of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit needs to come and to intercede. We need those such intercessors that we have studied throughout this whole weekend. And in particular, I just want to focus on the Hebrides. The Hebrides revival is uh, most popular known for the 1949 revival that we can see where Duncan Campbell was involved, who came from a, uh, a nearing place and also came to that place. But there were people before that. There were moves of God in the 1800s. There were moves of God even in 1930s that we see as an example. But it's good for you to know because these intercessors, they prayed and groaned and moaned in the Spirit. They wept in the Spirit. These were gifts of the Holy Spirit where the Holy Spirit praise with words that cannot be uttered. That's not talking about 
the gift of speaking in tongues. This is where the Holy Spirit is praying through a believer. When the, when the vessel is empty, when the vessel is clean, I'm not talking about deliverance process. I'm talking about the Holy Spirit taking over a vessel that is intently praying. That's how they used to pray years ago, but it's a lost art in the church right now. It's a lost art. You may see it in Africa. You may see it in some parts of uh, Asia or some parts of South America, but other parts, it's very dead. It's very dry. We need to come back to that type of prayer, that real painful prayer of pushing in so that we can birth this revival through prayer, through travail, through these things that you've learned. And if you haven't uh, done the fasting, then I encourage you to read the program, even if you don't fast, so you can understand and come up to speed because God wants to bring about this revival. So now the Hebrides revival, as I said, was famous with the 1949. But it also we see that in 1939, there was something that very special happened because uh, particular women intercessors that were praying, they would pray before that, the meetings, they would pray and travail and they didn't even attend the actual revival. They prayed from home because when they started to pray, they also uh, encountered revival, but they would pray until the burden was lifted, until the soul started coming. So as they were praying, they were praying with an agony for our souls. And as soon as that agony, that burden lifted from them, that's when the soul started to be saved throughout the revival. And then they would get it again and they would pray until they'd stop. Then they would get it again and they would pray. And then people were actually getting saved as a result, in these revivals, I'm not just talking about a crusade. I'm talking about revival where the sovereign move of God comes. Hallelujah. So I just want you to understand there is something deeper that we need to hand. So there was one testimony of one woman in this, and she says, we did not have time to be in the marvelous meetings. The breath of the Spirit of God would come and it was like women in childbirth that said the, the birth pangs. We would fill up and up with the breath of God and we would be in agony and suddenly a soul would be born into the kingdom and there would be relief as the new soul was born. Then the weight would come again and we would fill up again and again and others would be born. And so it went on again. So they were filled with the Holy Spirit. They were encountering the revival from their prayer closets. Precious saints, the end time revival that is coming is going to have so many intercessors. Even if there is a meeting, there may be like hundreds of intercessors behind praying. They could be in their houses. They don't even need to be in the location, precious saints. You can be praying for this ministry all the way in America, all the way in Asia, all the way in South America, the Caribbean, India, um, Europe, wherever it is, you can be praying from Australia for, for any meeting anywhere. I encourage you, to connect and pray because God is about to do something greater within this hour. Somebody say hallelujah. So in the 1949 revival, we also see that during the Hebrides revival, two elderly intercessors confessed something similar. So two sisters were powerfully used during this revival. They were Peggy and Christina Smith. One was 84, one was 82. Peggy was blind and both were crippled with arthritis. Now, some of the unique things about these intercessors from the Hebrides were they never went to the church services. They never, they remained in prayer continually. They confessed to having visions which gave direction and warning to certain aspects of the revival. They had visions, they had dreams, and so it is. You know, Reinhard Bonnke's ministry, was very much known for the dreams and visions that would also come to him and also to others that they would share. So when you see me sharing visions and dreams of others, it's because it's pertaining, it's the same spirit. We are the body of Christ. Just as you saw uh, with Daniel Nash, Father Nash and Charles Finney, there was not just him, but there were others. There were a group of intercessors praying and they also didn't even partake of the marvelous meetings, but they were encountering revival in the hotel rooms, wherever they were praying. He would pray until the people 
would uh, come under the conviction of the Holy Spirit in the main streets of wherever the hotel was. That would be a sign for him to say, now send a message to Charles Finney, now come and preach. Now come and preach. He didn't go and take the podium and say, well, I'm going to go and preach now because it's now time. No, he sent, he knew his position. This was a pastor that also started some revivals prior, uh, uh, it, God used to influence, to spark some. But he knew his position. God said, I am calling you to pray. He didn't try to do something that uh, Charles Finney was doing. He stayed in his prayer closet. Not all of us need to go out and preach, but we all call to pray. And God is calling us to be prayers within this hour. Hallelujah. So we also are ready to take such a commitment. And I believe that some of you are ready to take that commitment, to cry out to God so that he would anoint us from high to receive the anointing for intercession. Just as you join this weekend, you've been crying out for it, continually to cry out for more of it. So you can be like some of these people that your heart also will go from one location to another, just as we saw throughout the stories. There are so many great stories in this that would inspire you to also to pray. And it's only the Holy Spirit that can give you that anointing, that give you that grace to pray for long periods of time. Precious saints, it is time for us to push in because I believe he is raising end time intercessors for the end time revival to come to all nations, all cities. It's time for us to arise from our slumber. It's time for us to arise and pray and ask God. Now, at the end of the four day fasting, you'll see a petition there. And it's saying, I'm challenging intercessors to say, hey, now that you've done the fast, I ask you to pray for this ministry, pray for this end time revival, pray for these meetings in Africa, pray for the up and coming meetings in America in November. However, God wants to do it. It's not about selling another book, asking for money. We are not interested in those things. We are interested in praying for revival, praying for lost souls and people being prepared for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Precious saints, it is time for us to push in. It is time for us to pray. So Heavenly Father, I thank you that even as those that completed the fasting, give them the grace now to press into prayer and fasting. Give them the anointing to stay at the midnight hour. Give them the anointing to pray deeper and further like never before. May they know you. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ because this is eternal life, that they may know you, God, and your Son, the Christ. Oh Lord, Holy Spirit, we thank you that your job and your purpose is to come and to glorify Jesus Christ. I pray that when the name of Jesus is lifted up and glorified, you will draw all men unto yourself. Heavenly Father, we thank you that your son died for our sins and that is he is lifted up and the cross and the blood of Jesus that has power. Let it come right now and break every yoke of every person today in the name of Jesus Christ. Send revival in this end time hour. Send revival to the nations, oh Lord. Send revival to the nations and let your glory come and let me pour it out in the name of Jesus Christ. Come and touch your people. Come and fill them from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. Oh Lord, send revival. Oh Lord, send revival. Oh Lord, send revival. Let it come now. Let it come now as you touch your people from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray and believe. Amen and amen. Precious saints, I'm on my way to Africa. It is now time for you to get ready. Those that are in Africa, it is now time. If I'm coming to your nation and you don't come and then the rapture happens one day, and heaven be, uh, forbid you find yourself left behind, but you'll be like, ah, we should have gone to that meeting or whatever the circumstance. Don't allow any hindrance to stop you. Those outside the country, those outside, you're welcome to come to the meetings. In particular, I would come to the ones with very good uh, infrastructure. The ones in Kenya are going to be uh, done very good and it's uh, very good for you. South Africa will be very good for you also. And for those in Zambia, you're welcome, most welcome. So uh, I just pray that those that are in Africa will come, those that will take heed to the word. They're all free for you to be able to come so that you can come to the meetings. We don't charge anything. I'm not after your money. I'm not after any of those things other than lost souls, you getting right for the Lord's coming 
and us being on fire for God, that you also, that God would reach your families, reach your uh, spouses, reach your children, reach your homes, reach your nations, reach your state houses, re reach your parliaments, whatever it is, that God would save them all. God would save them all in Jesus' name. So I just encourage you, join in too. We've got another fast coming in September, uh, the weekend of our um, ministry that will take place in South Africa. I encourage you to come and join. Uh, for those that need baptism, in South Africa, I want you to uh, to contact us and let us know so that we can plan that on the Sunday, uh, which well, there will, won't be any conference that day, but the Sunday we can put aside for baptism and uh, Pastor Cabello can organize a pool, whatever we need to do. It's going to be cold. if We're in winter there, but it's all right. God is on the move. God is on the move. When God is on the move, he's on the move. So may the Lord bless you from my family to yours. God bless you. We love you. We are praying for you, precious saints. Shalom, shalom, shalom.